Hey guys, so in this uh, podcast, I wanted to go over essentially how to better choose your numbers on meet day um, when you're going to your powerlifting meets. And this basically is going to have to do with sort of understanding how the peaking process works from a fundamental level and then moving on into how to pick numbers based off of this. So first off, peaking is basically the process of being able to lower down fatigue to express your true fitness level. Um, so when we are peaking for a competition for powerlifting, we are trying to get really good at performing the skill of a one rep max. Typically in that last block, you're going to be performing several singles on the squat bench and deadlift are usually gonna be heavier week after week after week. Um, and this is basically to help build um, some more strength, a little bit more neural characteristics of a one rep max and be able to be stronger on the platform. Um, so typically what happens as we're doing that is intensity is pretty high on all three lifts, the squat bench and the deadlift. And as such, a lot of lifters tend to really feel pretty beat down towards the end um, from intensity being that high. Um, not many people can really tolerate a ton of heavy singles on the squat bench and deadlift. And this is actually one of my main criticisms of year round singles for most lifters. I typically like to, you know, alternate this or, you know, maybe one block room singles on a lift or, you know, we keep a single in on a lift per year, not like all three, just as a side note. Um, but when we are going into our meets and when we are sort of gauging our strength levels, um, really however strong that you are, on that last week of training is going to dictate relatively around where you're going to be on meet day. So what I mean by this is that say if you do a single at RPE eight and that projects out your, your run up max to, you know, say you do 450 at RPE eight, that's 205 kilos and it projects out to 501 or 227 and a half kilos. That's basically saying, okay, under fatigue, from where I'm at right now, this is about what I can hit in training. And so when we are planning our numbers, I always first off plan on that with all my lifters in terms of what are they going to do to hit. The reason why is this establishes baseline expectations. Um, because lots of times people will just plan on assuming a peak and you don't want to do that. You want to basically have your meets, have your lifts um, your, sorry, your attempts set up in a way that helps you really gauge your strength. So typically going back to that one rep max estimate, what I do with that is I say, okay, cool. This is your baseline strength right now with where we're at right right now, you know, with all this cumulative fatigue, um, and whatnot. Now, ideally what happens is even if you are feeling quite beat up, you should still be able to get stronger week after week because that's also a very important part of the peaking process. Um, and you know, fatigue being high, sometimes it's just a consequence of productive training. You know, that's something that we want to chase. You know, it's not like we want to like overreach intentionally and then pull back because really the research has kind of um, stated that, you know, even though this was sort of a theory in the past that like functional overreaching, will get you stronger than you could otherwise, it's actually not going to. That functional overreaching was basically, was basically where you're going to be doing more volume than you can handle to the point where you're probably either flatlining or regressing with, with your strength. Um, that doesn't lead to better outcomes than if you were to just be getting stronger week after week after week. Um, so when we are doing our singles and we are moving into it, we don't want to be at that point where we are having fatigue, fatigue start to, you know, really interfere with our ability to adapt. It means that our training most is not proper. I'm going into a meet and the goal of a competition block or a peaking block should be to get stronger. It should be to enhance that fitness um, and really not let that fatigue, that fatigue get out of control going into the meet and I mean, learning how to keep fitness high as you're tapering down into meet and expressing that fitness. Now, Going back to the estimated run, 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 run max, and that being our baseline strength. Um, so the, the average that you can get from tapering 
and peaking a lift from the re-research is around two to five percent and that is a range um and so typically what i will do is i say okay awesome you're you know you're lifting in this case lifter you know we know you can probably hit 501 but you know if you have a really big peak you could probably hit you know 523 or something like, like, like that um you know something that in that range and really pick a range of values based off of that five percent estimate that you're probably going to be able to do something within that that, that range um now a important note on this is that this is something that i really only see happen with the squat and with the deadlift um unless you are a really strong bencher like i'm talking like you know 200 kilos or more something like that or just a very heavy lifter or whatever um typically i don't really see bench peak i see bench you know you tend to hit about what you hit in, in training or about what it was for projecting out or like five pounds more for most lifters so it's not something i really apply to bench um bench i actually don't taper very much for my for my lifters you know i will be addressing sort of how i peak and taper most of, of these lifts later but um usually you know use that, that that range and then sort of when we are making attempts or we are planning on our attempts usually what i'm going to, going to do is take about 95 percent or 90 to 97 percent of that, that training max that we know hey 501 and use that as a second attempt and then for a first attempt you know anywhere between you know 80 89 to like 91 percent uh typically for lifters and the whole thought process you want to have with a first attempt is that you are literally just getting yourself on the board you know you're just trying to get some number on the board to really help build the confidence get you into the, get you into the meat that's really all it is um so you don't want to open up too heavy you all really want to especially on squat open it up with a weight where you can absolutely just dunk depth because you're going to be able to actually like you know say if you were having a borderline squat on your third attempt the judges might actually go in your favor you know give you the benefit of the, the doubt if you have a borderline squat because you dunked your first attempt um and also just helps build the confidence and calms those meat day nerves so getting into the meat is the first attempt and the second attempt is really where we gauge our strength you know in between that 95 to 97 percent range so like you know if it feels lighter than you know an RPE 9, you know, it's an RPE 8.5, 8, whatever it is. Okay, you know, you're probably a little bit stronger. You can go off of that um, and basically gauge your third attempt. And this is, by the way, why you should be training with RPE as a powerlifter if you're serious, because there's no other way you're really going to be able to know how to put the right number on the bar on meet day if you are not used to training with, with RPE and sort of playing the game of like, how, how much do I have in the tank on this day? So that's something to keep in mind. And then that third attempt, you know, really, you know, keep in mind that 5% peak range, but usually, you know, but be honest with, with, with yourself about where you can go from there, how much you can actually add to that lift, you know, how much better of a day it is. And a practical piece of advice I have is whatever you think that you could do at your top end, in most scenarios, go a little underneath that, like two and a half kilos, because your, your mentality on meet day needs to be building your total and building points you know obviously you want to be able to pr but you can pr really any other day of the year you know most lifters are competing two or three two, three days days a year when you're com competing compete stack up points make lifts a nine for nine total is always going to be a higher total than an eight for nine total and just remember that so that is typically how i select numbers i will go off of where their strength is at on my lifter and that last week, their estimated one rep max, plan a range for that third attempt, um, you know, anywhere within that 5% peak range. And then I will uh, basically pick a second attempt based off of that between 95 and 97% of their actual training max. So, you know, again, like, so for example, 501, I would probably do somebody, get them like, you know, say like, 452 and then for a second it'd be like 474 to like 485 
somewhere like that. And again, there's a range on the second attempt because you know if the opener feels like absurdly light, they can go a little bit, a little bit heavier. And then at the right, okay, cool. I can probably go to you know maybe be like five eighteen if it felt like really good. Um, because like as just you know for reference, for RPE scale, um, a ninety percent is around an RPE seven, rather ninety five percent is around RPE nine. Um, so you can kind of use that to sort of understand like, well, where is my strength at on any given day? So that's how I select numbers, how you should plan on numbers and how you should go about choosing your numbers. Now, when we are peaking and we are tapering, um, we are essentially number one thing that you want to manipulate is volume. Volume is going to be number one driver of overall fatigue um, systemically and locally um, with, your neuro with your neurology and with your muscles and with your joints, et cetera. And these are all like, you know, things that are going to impact peace peak, peak force production or your ability to express strength. So we are going to basically try to lower down mostly volume while maintaining a sufficiently high amount of, in of intensity for us to really maintain all those adaptations that we have created during the training block. Because one of the things that people do wrong is like, oh, I'm not going to train at all. Um, and they don't have any sort of intensity exposure. And that doesn't really work out well. Like the only lift you can kind of get away with doing that is like the deadlift, but the squat and the, and the bench press, these eccentrically loaded movements tend to need more intensity exposure um, and more volume to be in, in order to peak them, you know, and not detrain because we don't want them to come in flat and detrain it off meat day and like weaker than, you know, we, we, we were in training. You know, I think everybody can sort of relate to the fact that, like, you know, we've all had days where we came into the gym. We felt absolutely amazing. We were just really, really weak. You know, that's that's the feeling of coming in flat versus, you know, the feeling of, you know, coming in really, really fatigued. But your but your preparedness is really, really high. You know, you're super strong. And that's sort of where you want to be at the end of your peak. Again, if you're not there, you probably messed something up with your training stimulus, your recovery, et cetera. That should be addressed with, with yourself or your coach following the, the, the meet. Um, but when we are going to be um, peaking out our strength, we want to maintain that you know certain amount of, of intensity um, on all lifts. So typically, what I do on the weeks of the meet is I will lower down um, you know squat volume on the week of the meet by about like one rep and one set. Typically, it's like a minus one RPE for progression. Um, like, uh, sorry, a minus two RPE for regression in, in relative intensity. So, if, say, if your single was at eight on Monday, I would do like a single at like five to six based on how little it felt. Then the range of that um, would we'll typically lower down a rep and a set from each squat pattern that, that they do. Um, and also the same relative intensity reduction. And then on bench press, um, how I tend to peak the bench press is I, the week of the meet, I tend to keep intensity, you know, a little bit higher run RPE seven on that earlier on in the week. So that maybe it's the second to last bench workout, keep all the sets in. In most cases, now somebody has a little bit longer range of motion. I know they tend to get a little bit more beat up for, for, for bench. That's when I might lower down a set and a rep um on that day but typically i don't do that because i find that bench kind of needs that volume in there in like one lighter session so about two days out from their meet you know is really enough and typically what i will do is get like one or two two singles at rp6 which is like their last warm-up and then some light doubles of like minus five or seven percent excuse me percent after that so that is something that i typically do with, with, with bench press um a lot of people over taper bench and it comes in flat and in train again, like bench doesn't really get much of a peak. It just doesn't work like that. And then with deadlift for a lot of times for my conventional deadlifters, I really will, I, I tend to not have them deadly deadlift the week of other meet, um, if at all. Um, if I do, it's like super, super light, like, you know, 70% for like a two by two, something light like that, whereas for my Sumo deadlifters, um, I tend to keep in a little bit more volume, you know, about three singles at RPE five, so like a second class warm up, warm up weight, 
on Monday, about five days, it is out. And that's typically how I will peak my, my lifters. Again, like you want to have intensity relatively high. So about like, you know, a good idea is to have at least an 85% exposure with your top end um, intensity the week of the meet. That's probably what you want to have, um, you know, in there. Now, you know, if you're training a structure in the sense that, you know, you don't do singles like earlier on in the week, it's more so later on in the week. I would not just add in a single. I would just lower down your volume and your relative intensity using those guidelines that I said, um, because your weekly layout absolutely matters with how you will with how you will peak. So, you know, don't just add in a single for no reason if you're used to only doing reps. Like my last squat peak, I did like a three by five. And I was doing like a three by six, like earlier on on Mondays. And I was doing like my single later on the week. I didn't touch a single. I just did that slight volume re reduction. You know, I lowered down. Um, sorry, I did a th three by five as I was doing a four by six. And like, I peaked great. I, that was the strongest I ever felt on, felt on squat. Um, so again, don't just throw in a single there because you will throw things, things off with your acute fatigue pattern because we are trying to line up our acute fatigue to be strong on meet, on meet day. Um, acute fatigue is basically going to be, you know, the days that you feel strong on, um, days that you feel a little bit more, more beat up on during the week. And then chronic fatigue is just something that sort of builds as you get stronger. That's really a taper week is aiming to dissipate is that chronic fatigue and line up your acute fatigue patterns so that you're ideally strong on the day that you, that you, you compete. Now, in regards to accessory work, what I typically do is I will, so accessories do drive a part of the training stimulus. You know, we are getting stronger in part because of our accessories. They're a part of the volume. So in terms of taking out accessories, um, I do this on basically a how systemically fatigued is my lifter heading into this meet. So if I have a lifter who's just super beat up, they're super sore, super tired, you know, no desire to train, et cetera, like all these indicators I look for um, in, you know, assessing quote unquote fatigue, I will tend to do less accessories. Um, whereas if somebody's feeling, you know, not really that beat up, they're still really strong. I'm probably only like one set of accessories, lower down their average RPE by like one. So say they're doing like a seven to eight RPE, it'd be like a six, a six to seven instead. Um, but this is really where you need to know your athlete and yourself and keep tabs on your re recovery, how you're feeling, how sore are, are, are you, um, how, like, where's your overall fatigue levels? Um, and, you know, you should be tracking certain metrics that help guide that, this, that decision. Now, one last point I have about meat week on you know, tapering is you want to have a cessation, a cessation of training about two days out from your meet. So if you're competing on um, Saturday, like most people are, you want to have your last session be on Wednesday. You have two days off. That's pretty good standard practice. Um, you know, you're going to you just relax and do whatever, whatever you can. Um, Last point I have about meet meet week and doing your best with the peaking into tapering. You just manage your stress levels, like sleep. Don't worry about 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 let the meet. Don't do extra things. Like what's done is done. Be proud of, of, of yourself. You know, understand that you are going to have a you know a ton of fun. Turn those nerves into excitement and reframe. Um, visualize how the meet day is going to to, to to go. You know, tell yourself you're going to do really well. Um, the power of the mind is absolutely an important thing here. So that's something to just do. Make sure that you're sleeping enough um, and don't really, really worry about it. You know, you've put forth really everything to, the, to, the, to this point. Now, one last point I want to go over before I end this is how heavy should you go on the squat bench and deadlift going into your meet? So this is important because if we go all out and we, you know, we go too heavy in training, too close to a max on whatever lift we're doing, you know, we, we do run the risk of being fatigued neuro neurologically going in, going in, into the meat. So here's some good standard practices. Um, I typically like to cap lifters at no more than a nine RPE on squat and deadlift. And then, you know, I can actually do find that most people can go pretty damn close to a max on a bench as long as they have like enough time to, to taper off 
from from there. And also, um, yeah, it just depends. Yeah, I just I find that most people can go a little bit heavier uh, on bench press. It seems like the heavier that you can go, that issues as you're peaking, like the bench just responds really well to for most people. So typically, um, if I you know this lines, I will have last heavy deadlift on you know be 10 to 14 days out. Um, the last heavy squat uh, five to seven days out. Um, and then the last heavy bench is going to be about three to five days days out. That's a good rule of thumb when you're designing your peaking taper strategy. And if you, you know, if you want to go a little bit heavier, you make sure it's like before that. But again, I would still recommend. I find most people peak pretty well, keeping within like, you know, a sub nine RPE. Um, like a lot of my, my lifters do really well. You're doing like a reverse taper where we go down to like, you know, their openers like two weeks out. And then, you know, they're like an RPE nine, RPE nine, three weeks out. But just the main thing is here is just try to not max on the squat and the deadlift. Um, that's, you know, you're, you, I've had times where I've taken like 705, for example, like in the gym, it took me like a month to like recover from, from, from that. So again, you get, ask yourself, is this weight I'm going to lift going to actually get, 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 get stronger or is it not? Because we know that training closer to failure is not actually more beneficial for strength um, relative to the fatigue. Basically the fatigue is the disproportionate above an, an RPE eight in most cases. Um, so that's why on squat and deadlift, you know, the closer that you can stay to a true eight in training, probably the, the you know, the, 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 the better about two weeks out. I wouldn't go above, above that. If you're going to go RPE nine, it has to be like, like three weeks out. Um, and then on bench press, I mean, as long as it's like, not like just like a week out, you're maxing, like you should be like totally fine. Uh, in most cases I will cap my lifters around like, like, like a nine to 9.5 on their singles. Um, you know, the week before the meet. So hopefully this, this was, this was helpful. Um, and, uh, this helps you guys plan out your meets a little bit better, a little bit better, uh, attempt strategies.